Clinton. I have told you that I am a man who puts my money where my mouth is, and I hope that others in the media would do the same. I'm going to start posting today some letters to do with donations I have recently made to some organization so you so show you can see for yourself where my my head is at, okay? Here's one. California Association of Highway Patrolmen for immediate release. The Paul Revere Society and Dr. Michael Savage donate $50,000 to the California Association of Highway Patrolmen Widows and Orphans Trust Fund. Sacramento, California. The Paul Revere Society and Dr. Michael Savage, syndicated radio host, noted author of over 20 books, and director of the Paul Revere Society has donated the generous sum of $50,000 to the California Association of Highway Patrolmen, CAHP Widows and Orphans Trust Fund. The Paul Revere Society is a patriotic organization with a core charter for the protection of this country's borders, language, and culture. Its director, Dr. Michael Savage, is best known for a syndicated radio show, The Savage Nation. The audience ranging from 8 to 10 million listeners on uh, close to 400 stations across America, making it the third largest radio talk show in the country. Savage has always been a strong supporter of law enforcement and their efforts. He made a significant donation to the surviving families of the four Oakland police officers gunned down in the spring of 2009. Dr. Savage applauds the men and women in uniform who place their lives on the line every day to protect our freedoms. It is Dr. Savage's sincere hope that this current donation of $50,000 will help aid the families of those that have paid the ultimate price in service to California citizens. The Paul Revere Society and Dr. Savage pledged the money to the CAHP Trust Fund in June 2009. For more information on Dr. Michael Savage, visit michaelsavage.com. So I want you to understand that over the next few days, I'm going to release uh, on this program and on my website the amounts and the organizations I have made donations to so you can get a, a picture of who I'm interested in helping. It's as simple as that. And uh, that's all. That's all there is to it. I'm not looking for a halo. There are people out there who deserve help. There are animals who need help. And there are people who are helping the animals. I mean, I'll give you another example. I'm not going to read the group. But it turns out that I gave some money to, a, to an elephant fund. And they said to me f- uh, from uh, their office today, we thank the Paul Revere Society and Dr. Michael Savage to help elephants in Malawi. If I'm mispronouncing it, I'm sorry. IFAW's epic translocation of 83 elephants in that country solved a major conservation problem. In other words, I helped them move 83 elephants away from the murderers who are butchering them, the poachers. Okay, so in other words, money does matter. Money does matter, and your donations matter, no matter where you send them. I'm not telling you where to send money, but uh, you ask, many people have asked, what do you really uh, believe in? What do you give money to? So those are some of the things. Now let's go back to the news. Great jokes from Little Acorns Grow. 1-800-449-8255. MichaelSavage.com is the website. All the news. The biggest story is that Jimmy Carter, who himself, in my opinion, is a blatant uh, anti-Semite by every one of his statements and deeds. Jimmy Carter meets the standard for racist. He's now saying that any opposition to to, uh, Obama's uh, Obamacare or his uh, desire for socialized medicine, to put it in other terms, is because he's black. Jimmy Carter claims that anyone who raises any statement against Obama is a racist. Now, coming from Jimmy Carter, it's laughable in that everything that's come out of his mouth over the last 30 years has not only been un-American, but it's been anti-Jewish and anti-Israel. So I'll let it sit at that. I mean, you know, it's like the kettle calling the whatever. You know what I'm saying? Gold surges close to record high. Why not? I mean, if you're printing money and you can't print gold, what do you think is going to go up and what do you think is going to go down? And going back to uh, Acorn again, pimp and the prostitute, that's a big story. And the person who should get all the credit for it, really, are not only the young guys who did it, the conservative uh, team behind the pimp busts, at Acorn, but it's uh, Andrew Breitbart. Andrew Breitbart owns this story. It's being stolen by the hemorrhoid. The hemorrhoid, as you well know, is uh, is so desperate for attention. He's like a girl at a at a wedding who will not stop dancing. You ever see that type? That when you ever go to a wedding and there's always a little girl who they can't get off the dance floor. That's the hemorrhoid with ears. No matter what anyone does, he takes the credit for it. So the Acorn story does go to uh, uh, and Andrew Breitbart, who we're going to get on the show. Well, you get the picture. Now, as I said earlier, um, there's definitely a big scandal going on, and it's got to do with Acorn, and that's, of course, who elected Obama. One of the chief ways he got elected was through the Chicago way, which is fake votes. 
as you well know, in the old days in Chicago, they gave uh, they gave them a five dollar bottle of brandy if they would vote for someone. Now they give out millions of dollars, and uh, the group Acorn spreads it around. And uh, as I said to you, great jokes from little acorns grow. What you're about to hear uh, is a result of James O'Keefe the third. He's a filmmaker and a female partner uh, posing as a pimp and an escort that are trying to get a housing loan through Acorn. And in doing so, they find out ways to keep the money they make off the books and to get some of it put towards the pimp's congressional run. The Acorn worker, Tressa Kalki, describes her years as an escort and also describes killing her husband and how she planned it out. We thank Andrew Breitbart for this story. Listen to clip six. I shot him. I shot him. Self-defense? Yeah. And then I just picked up the gun and said, F*** you. And I shot him. And he died. Right there. And, but before that, I had done some, laid some groundwork. You know, mm -hmm. I went to a domestic violence shelter and I mm -hmm. pleaded my case with them. And uh, so everybody in town was knowing that this was happening. So you hear now there's a double going on here. The woman says she shot her husband. But she laid groundwork before killing her husband, this is a, an acorn worker, by first having gone to domestic violence shelters so that everyone in town thought that he was committing violence against her over the years. Keith, the filmmaker, explaining how he's bringing in girls from overseas uh, and explaining it to the acorn uh, uh, worker. Listen to uh, Seven. We're bringing these girls from overseas, but we are going to take a, a cut of the profit, and, yeah. I, and I intend to use the profit right. from the tricks the girls perform right. to fund my political campaign right. and the okay, advertising. But, but you see, do you think every single, do you think every congressman, every legislator, do you think that even Obama, you know, our new president, right. um, or any of them, ever, ever actually put down every single uh, resource where they got their money? Kennedy, I don't, they got their money from bootlegging and prostitution. They got their money what about, from running illegal whiskey. And I ran a service. Really? Yeah. Well, Heidi Fleiss is my hero. <laughs> so here's a, an acorn worker, a former hooker, saying uh, that the Kennedys got their money from bootlegging and prostitution. And then she explains how she ran a, an escort service and how Heidi Fleiss is her hero. This is the kind of... Uh, these are the kind of people that uh, uh, Acorn is associated with. They helped elect Obama with fraudulent votes. Listen to the clip eight now. I talked to congressmen, senators, assembly uh, people really? every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gloria Negretti uh, McLeod, Torres. Let's see, Wilmer Amina Carter is assemblywoman. Mm -hmm. I am the 62nd district. Mm -hmm. Obama right. is right up here in San Bernardino. Barbara Boxer. So Barbara Boxer, she counts amongst her mentors. <laughs> and you always thought Barbara, Barbara Boxer was in it for the poor and downtrodden. <laughs> you thought smart Barbara from Brooklyn was in it for the poor, huh? <laughs> you didn't know any better, huh? <laughs> She's done pretty good, Boxer. <laughs> Fooling the liberals of Marin County <laughs> and the people of the state of California. <laughs> now, listen to clip nine. I mean, they, they pay thousands of dollars more if they're a little violent with these 14-year-old girls. Again, it's how you want it to be run. Yeah. Don't forget, it's, you can mold this into anything you want. Okay. You know, no. you can mold it into the, into the level of, of uh, uh, decency or indecency. See? So she's a, an acorn worker, and she's advising an undercover operative how to beat the law, and how to use underage girls as prostitutes. And she counts many politicians as her friend, including Barbara Boxer. So, ladies and gentlemen, I rest my case. We go back again to the old saying about the missionaries who came to Hawaii to do good and did very well indeed. And we bring it up to date to the liberal Democrats, who are the richest people in Congress, uh, who have, every day of their life, espoused how they're doing good for the people, when in fact their families are doing very well indeed. It's all about the money. It goes all the way back to yesterday's discussion on the Savage Nation of Tammany Hall politics, the five points, and the gangs that ran New York. And you say, well, that's the way of the world. It's always been that way. Explain this to someone earlier. She said to me, so you say nothing's really changed, so what's the big deal? And here's the big deal. 
In other words, the people always knew that the political system ran that way, that it was patronage and that it wasn't what you knew, it was who you knew. Everybody knows that. I'm not shocked by it. I'm not a child. I knew it all the way back into my academic years that some of the biggest morons wound up running departments, not because they were brighter than anybody else in the sciences, but they kissed certain butts along the way and uh, they were put into positions. Going all the way back, uh, we saw that, and it was, it was no shock to me. But what happened now is that now that the country's treasury is empty and that we are actually in the negative and we're bankrupt, the old game is over. The old game of largesse from the treasury is over. The old game of rewar rewarding pimps and prostitutes for votes has to be over. In other words, it all worked when it worked. But now that there's no money, it can't work anymore. The old game is over. And that's why there's double outrage. I'll be right back. Savage.